The funny thing about youth is that when you're young, you can't wait to grow up. You want the freedom, the money, and the adventure. But as you age, you start to realize what you had when you were young was special too. The free time, the lack of expectations, and most of all, the ability to have fun for fun's sake. Personally, I feel blessed to have lived out my version of my teens and my 20s. But now sitting at 29, I'd be lying to you if I said that every once in a while, I don't miss the simpler days. The days where my dad would drop me off at the pier and I had absolutely no clue what was gonna happen out there. Was a giant school of fish gonna come through? Was I gonna have a shot at catching something new? Maybe there was gonna be some cool people out there to just have a nice conversation with. Getting older's funny, man. In the past year, I've had the privilege of traveling to some amazing places, and I've had the opportunity to catch some incredible fish. But here I find myself walking out onto the same old pier to do the same thing that my 14-year-old self took completely for granted. Hey, what's going on guys? It has been a while. And not for a lack of me trying to film videos for you guys, but man, I've just had some trips that just haven't been panning out. But today, I have an awesome video for you. Out on the pier, and I've fished it for a couple days now to put together quite the awesome video for you. We're catching tons of different fish. Let's get after it. When I walk out onto the pier this time of year, I'm looking to primarily do one thing. I want to sight fish something big that's going to pull drag. So whether that's a Jack Ravel or a Cobia or whatever it is, I want to be able to see something, present a lure to it, and have it eat. So that's kind of what I go to, the, or that's kind of what I walk out onto the pier with in mind. So I bring an assortment of rods, swimming plugs, heavy lures, jigs, and I kind of prepare myself to put myself in the best situation so that when something big swims by, I'm able to capitalize on the situation. When something like this big school of Jack Crevel swim by the pier, it can get insanely chaotic, especially when there's a bunch of anglers on the pier. So multiple people hooked up at once, you have to be ready for chaos, you have to be ready to communicate. So I always try and come as prepared as I can. First day that I came out to the pier, I expected there to be at least something coming through. There was a lot of wind, conditions looked decent, and there just didn't, <laughs> The conditions didn't match what I thought it was gonna be. Okay, so we got a big school of Jack Crevel out in front of me. Let's see if they come in. Maybe we can get one to eat this big old hunk of metal. The pier fisherman's curse is constantly seeing fish that are just out of reach. So on this day in particular, there's a color change about, I wanna say 500 to 1,000 feet away from the end of the pier. These big Jack schools love to cruise right down that color change. Every once in a while, they'll give you a little bit of hope and they'll come in just a little bit closer and make you think that you'll be able to reach them. Right here, me and my buddy Cliff were able to get just on the edge of the school. They didn't react to my lure, but they did react to his. Unfortunately, it didn't pan out the way we wanted because he got bit, but he didn't stay buttoned to this big Yeah, he did. <laughs> oh, you got him coming in. All right, everybody jump in line, jump in line. <laughs> I came out here kind of set on what I wanted to do and that led to me not catching all that much but I did see a couple bluefish caught, did see some pompano caught and there definitely was at least something to catch. Oh my god, that's the best fish on the pier right there. Oh! oh yeah. <laughs> Rabbit fish came up and hammered it. That's a big chicken son. A big chicken. We're gonna feed the village. <laughs> Victor, you ready boy? <laughs> Right here, my man Cliff is hooked up to a silver puffer fish, better known locally as a rabbit fish. They swim around the pier and honestly will eat a little bit of everything. I've even seen him trying to eat a bear hook before. Some people like him, so he caught one for his buddy that was gonna take it home and eat it. What do we got? We got something tiny on the x -rap. No. 
Oh, you might hear all Oh my gosh. Oh yeah, Margaret. Oh my gosh. You want it? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> a few days went by and I got a call that there finally had been some jacks coming through. That's kind of what I wanted to catch. I wanted to sight fish some big fish that were actually going to pull some drag on heavier tackle. So I packed my stuff up, headed out for day two. Get out to the end and the water looks terrible. Exactly not what I wanted to see. I wanted to see like green or blue water. The water was just straight brown. It was not it. We are hooked up on the mother load of seaweed. Let's see if we get it in. Mm. Oh, this is a healthy patch. Oh, yeah. Oh, look at that. A little seaweed living shrimp just popped out. There's tons of these in there. Look at that guy. Tons of little life, maybe. Sargasm shrimp. Oh, shake it out. Yep, there's a couple more. There's some micro ones. Oh, come here. Looks like that. Pretty cool. I was watching this color change and there was this nice blue water that just seemed to be getting closer and closer to the pier as the tide got higher. Seemed like in an instant, once that blue water got within range of my vision, I was seeing schools of jacks come and cruising down and I was able to cast at them. So, I've been here for like I don't know, three hours or so, and there hasn't been much. The water's been like a really dirty brown. The water is starting to change colors right now, and we're starting to get this nice blue or siltier water. And within 15 minutes, there's nicer water coming in. We've been seeing schools of jacks. Just saw our best school, probably like 20 fish. I didn't make a perfect cast. Um, I made an okay cast, but they didn't react to it. They kind of, they were kind of spooky. And uh, I think the reason that they're kind of spooky is three seconds later, we just saw a hammerhead on top. So those things were like getting followed by a hammerhead. Hopefully we get a school to come in and we get them to commit. Just chugging this giant slingshot, like a diamond jig, but it's the surface iron. So it kind of swims on top. Made by Ocean's Legacy. Let's see if we can get one. Yeah, that's definitely all you. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Yeah, but it's fine. It seemed like it was actually going to start happening because we saw three schools of jacks in like 15 minutes once that blue water came in. And then no more jacks. Just stop seeing them. We had the conditions that exactly like I wanted. And it just goes to show sometimes exactly what you want. The fish still might not show up. So I just saw a shark and I casted. Oh, oh, the shark's on the blues. Oh, no. Look at him. Look at the yes, the yeah, the shark was after the blues. For, so when I casted oh, at the shark, the blues came up and ate it. Unfortunately, the blue that ate it pulled a hook. Ricky, what the heck did you just hook, my friend? Oh my god. This is aggressive. Oh my god. Ah, perfect. That's the bait we need. I believe that's what you asked for. <laughs> That is exactly what I asked for. If you wouldn't mind holding him once you get the hook out. If you can. Slimy SOB. Okay. Turn him. 
do the front hook here. He didn't like that. Back hook. Bam. He's a little excited. Yeah, I'd say so. Swim them out. See if we can find a kingfish. I don't know if he wants to swim though. Swimming out a live bluefish like I'm doing here has been one of the most productive methods that I've seen for oh, catching giant all, kings but... off the pier. A whole live bluefish, believe it or not, <laughs> kingfish just can't resist them. Believe it or not, my biggest king off of the pier came on a live bluefish and the king actually swam out from underneath the pier and smoked it within it being in the water for maybe three seconds. Like I cast it out and boom, it got inhaled. So you never really know what's gonna be out bit. there. A lot better than before. We're on, we are on, oh! No clue what we got, y'all. Just freaked out on top. This thing ate and then just started ripping back towards me. Took me forever to get tight with it. Keeps changing directions like crazy. Oh, there he is. Oh, black dip shark. He broke off. No. Uh, well, that's what the sharks do to your wire, y'all. They just kink it off. But we'll re rig. Do it again. Hopefully, Ricky can catch me another bluefish. That thing was in the Bahamas when I got eight. The afternoon went on. I hung out, talked to some friends. My buddy Ricky was able to pop a couple pompano. There were some bluefish around. So it was all in all a fun afternoon. Oh, Rick. Got the right kind. Dude, I haven't seen one of those in a long time. Out. Caught on a jig. I'm good. Look at that thing. Beautiful. Ricky, you're, this is why you're like just the Juno Pier champ right here. Don't, don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> we'll take some time and just blind cast when I'm standing here waiting for a fish to come by because you really never know what's going to show up. And a lot of fish will just eat these on a, on a blind cast. My buddy Alec a couple years ago caught like a 30 pound king in the middle of the day about this time of year we we're just blind casting just seeing what was around so always casting replace these trebs with uh 10 bkk raptor x's and uh these are super super sharp hooks so let's see if we can get something with the with the x traps you can do so many different retrieves you can work it fast like this back and forth slow roll it Honestly, slow rolling is like what I do the most because it always seems like that's when you get the bite. The fish just come up and just absolutely demolish it. So I was just blind casting and a bunch of jacks just popped up, crushed the X-trap. School, not giants, but pretty cool. Right behind me, Rick, throw in front of where I am. Yeah, there. Coming y'all's way. Excuse me. Watch out. Blind cast has the school come up out of nowhere. Knew there were some around. Those BKKs got them good. So we came here looking for 30 pounders and we're catching like eight pounders, but something that's the first like thing that I've had pull drag all day long. 
Take this guy. We're gonna let him go. Less than ideal release, but those are hardy fish, so I'll swim off and go make more jacks. That brings us to today, day three. Didn't want to come out today. Didn't have any plans of coming out today, but I got a call from two separate people, both saying that yesterday was incredible. There was tons of fish coming through, the wind was ripping, and there was just lots of fish just migrating down the coast. So I said, screw it, packed my stuff up, came out this morning. When I first saw the watercolor, I was very unimpressed. I honestly thought that this was gonna be a total bust of the day because the water looked terrible. But the minute I walked out onto the tee, my buddy Blair says, Ryan, get ready, they are here. One of the things that makes this so darn fun is the anticipation. You see this big school of jacks well out of casting range and they're just creeping closer and closer to the pier until it's finally time to take your shot at them. On your left, on your left. <laughs> oh, we off. No. <laughs> no. You get hooked, you get hooked. Oh, Ryan's in him. Ryan's in him. Oh, Ryan's in him. Oh, over me, Blair. We off. I'm off. He came off. So after hooking a few and losing a few, I was just getting ready to just catch one. I just needed to get one on the deck. Finally, a big school came through and I had the longest rod with the heaviest lure, so I was able to put the perfect shot on this school and hook up to a giant. You see him? Yeah. Oh, I got him. Get him, Ryan. Get him for Aaron. Get him for Aaron. They on me, they on me, they on me, they on me. Come on. Woo! There we go. We on. We on. Woo! I'm underneath you, brother. On the metal. Just a hunk of metal flying through the air. Just keep reeling in, guys. I don't know where the f anyone is. <laughs> Woo! Now this video isn't a great example of it, but when these big jacks are coming through, the hardest part isn't actually hooking them. It's actually not that hard to hook them. The hardest part is landing them because not only do you have to worry about the fish, you know, doing what it does, breaking you off, you know, breaking your line, going underneath the pier, you also have to deal with all the other anglers. So you have to deal with the tangles, you have to deal with getting around people, going over people's stuff, going under, over, under, over as the fish goes up and down the pier. So what you need to do when you're fighting these bigger fish is keep it directly in front of you. You can't plant your feet and just fight it from one position. You have to keep that fish directly in front of you and follow it where it goes while still fighting it and putting a good amount of attention on them. These days, there's a bunch of bull sharks that also follow these fish, so that's even an added challenge factor because you never know when a bull shark's going to come up and try and eat it. So, as you see here, I have a good group of guys that are helping to clear the pier for me to keep people out of my way, and I'm able to get this fish in an area that we can safely get a gaff down. Yeah, dude. Nah, yeah. Ski you. Okay. 
tangled. Hold on. Tangle with that thick rope? No. Damn it, highlighter. Oh, we got a whole rig in there. Yeah, highlighter through the rig in there. This one we're going to harvest today, y'all. So he is getting gaffed. Maybe, maybe not. In the head. Excellent gaff shot. Hey, Ryan, I heard all about you. Whew, I don't know what I wear. It was probably not good things either. It's the mahi from Japan, boy. Dude. Hell yeah. Hey, thanks, man. Welcome back, buddy. Hey, thanks for the call, too. Yeah. Blair called me up yesterday and said, hey, man, your favorite fish is on the pier. I said, Cobia? He said, no, Jax. <laughs> Kobe is right. No, these things actually pull drag. Kobe would just swim to the pier and then freak out when you gaff them. See that cardio? That's it. So that is what I've been after for a little bit now. A lot of people call these things trash, but they fight so hard. One of my favorites, we're going to use this guy uh, for some bait today. So he's coming home, but just a awesome fish. To see him cruising on top, cast out a plug or cast out a diamond jig and watch it absolutely crush it on top after like a i don't know a 15 second chase awesome man like it, it's essentially like america's version of a gt and gts are popular all over the world so just super stoked and there's a lot coming through today so i hope we catch all after getting that first big jack on the deck what ensued was some of the most fun and some of the most action that I've seen on the pier in a couple years. This drone footage that you're currently seeing was actually filmed on another day when the water was a little bit clearer, but I think it's a great representation of how incredible these fish are, especially when they're schooled up. Just imagine this swimming straight towards you, lure in your hand, and the anticipation and excitement that you're going to feel. Absolute chaos. Absolute chaos. Welcome to Juno Pier. Jake's looks tiny, you're out angling him. <laughs> Crazy, look at that grunt. Grunt buddies. So, Cliff, you've hooked like three today and you haven't taken more than 10 cranks on any of the fish. <laughs> I'm a man of the people, yeah. I let everybody. <laughs> <laughs> he just hooks them and hands off the rod to any the any willing. is called L5. Oh my god. <laughs> Watch your rod. Go ahead. Watch the Kalsar. Go ahead. Oh, they see it. They see it. They're chasing it. Oh, they're on me. Oh! Oh! Oh, that was so sick! <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was awesome. That fish was so fired up on it. Oh my god. That thing hammered it on top. That was as cool as it looks when they crush those things. Oh, I don't like when they come in this fast. I like I'm gonna run out a little bit more. These things are supposed to hang strong. <laughs> I 
Oh, he might be tail wrapped. <laughs> he seems all messed up. This rod and reel combo that I'm using was pretty much outcasting everyone else on the pier on this day. I'm using a Vanstall VSX-2 for a reel. This is a size 250 with 40 pound braid on it. it the rod is a 10 foot Ocean's Legacy Specialist. These rods I've been using for about a year now and they work extremely well. I will say that 10 foot is a little bit tougher to fight fish on because the longer the rod you get, the less leverage you get. I, I honestly like fighting fish on a nine more, but the advantage that I had over everyone else on the pier this day was I was able to outcast them. So I was able to reach the fish that not a lot of people could reach. Yeah, I'm over this one. I'll just come over both. It looked big when it came up. All right, I'm coming around you. Oh, watch out. I'm sorry. Coming over your head, sir. These stupid things. Is that GT, bro? That is a GT. Oh, bobber. Someone grab that bobber rod, please. Uh, bobber rod. Blue, blue, blue man. Bobber down! No, I got... Yeah. Just reel it up, please. Got those! Oh, this big one. That's big chicken. That's big one, I might not have back for that. <laughs> Somebody standing on the rope. I got you, bud. Okay. Oh, yeah. Can highlight us. Oh, he's dead now. Oh, my God. <laughs> In the back? Oh. <laughs> you all right, dude? Oh, my God. <laughs> Threw out his back on that gas shot. <laughs> Whoa, mother <laughs> down. The big one. Yes, sir. Number two. Gorgeous one. A little bit bigger, probably 25 pound class fish. Just gorgeous. So I'm giving this one to uh, someone that really wanted one to take home and eat. So he's going home. This fish will not be wasted. Definitely appreciated. There's so much fun to catch. The eat on this fish was so sick. He came up and absolutely annihilated the slingshot just on top of the water. So he's going home. Let's try and get another one. As the afternoon wore on, there actually ended up being less jacks coming through, but the pompano started chewing. And apparently this morning there was a really good pompano bite before I got here. I haven't caught a pompano on a jig in, honestly, five, six, 10 years. I don't really know. It's been a really long time, but I pulled out a jig out of my box that hadn't been used in a long time. Ricky gave me a quill and I tied on a pompano jig to just try and catch one or two. So the school of pompano is like swimming all around the pier. So it doesn't like necessarily matter where you're jigging right now. It just matters that you are jigging if you're trying to catch them. So basically letting this guy sink down to the bottom, pop it up and then it flutters back down, pop it up, it flutters back down. Looks like a sand flea or a shrimp. The pompano love it. And what's nice right now is we're catching a lot of pompano and not a lot of junk. So no bluefish or mackerel around. So hopefully it stays that way and I uh, get another one or two in the box. Yeah. Thanks, man. Oh, oh, we on. We on, we on. Woo! On the pier. Wow, that's a stud. $15 a pop. Bro, I don't know if you guys realize that's the first one I've caught on a jig in like a long time. Like I'm talking like eight years. Ricky! Yeah. Double? Bring him on, bring him on, bring him on. Legendary clip. Oh, Ricky. Ricky Double header, son. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Ricky Charters. Woo. Check in. Check in. Let's go, son. I'm gonna bag a, buy a bag of ice. All right, check it out, y'all. That is my first keeper pompano off the pier in 
quite a long time. Ate the jig. I don't really fish these for with bait much because it's just kind of boring for me, but that guy ate the little jig, the little um, green quill, and uh, it's great. It's going to make great dinner. We're going to clean this guy up later and cook him later. So while the big jacks that we were catching in the beginning of the video may be considered one of the hardest fighting or the strongest fish on the pier, these pompano would probably be considered one of the most expensive fish you can catch on the pier. You can find pompano for like $35 for one whole fish. Absolutely ridiculous prices. People love eating these things. Super fun afternoon. I'm gonna see you guys back at the filet table. What's going on guys? Welcome to the flay table. We got our little pompano here and um, I'm gonna try something that I've never tried before. I saw, shout out to Read the Fishmonger on Instagram. He filleted a pompano with this technique. It's been years since I filleted a pompano so we're gonna go ahead and try what he did. So he started with his knife. By the way, we're using the Danko Pro Series. You guys use my code, it's flashing on the screen. Bam. We take our knife and we wrap our way around the head right behind the peck fence and then turn it back around out like that so you literally just take the head off a little head nugget there but we're not really missing any meat or anything like that now we just have the rest of the carcass we're going to take our knife we're going to work our way down the fillet One little cut here. Pop over to the other side of the backbone. Bam. Bam, and then we have our filet there. Take off this little piece of stomach lining here. And then we are doing a skin on recipe. So we're leaving the skin on, but I'm just gonna take the pin bones out. So right here, just kind of like a V cut down towards the skin. And we have our little pin bones out. And we have our pompadour filet. One of my things when I'm filleting fish is I definitely try and pop up over the rib cage. I'm not always successful, but it does make just for easier cleanup. Separate it down there. Bam. And then we have that. That looks pretty good. You can almost see the light coming through it. So we didn't leave very much meat on this carcass at all. It's a pretty darn cool method. We're gonna get these guys prepped for the grill. See you guys in the kitchen. Okay, so I was put in charge of doing the sides. So we're doing sweet potato fries um, that are gonna be oven baked and we are gonna do some zucchinis on the grill. We basically took three sweet potatoes, sliced them up into like french fry shapes and we're going to put oil and salt, pepper and garlic powder on them and put them in the oven so they're crispy. So we're pouring in oil. By the way, y'all, this is my lovely girlfriend, Christina, if you don't know who this is. <laughs> all right, so we're just brushing on all these sweet potatoes. And I just want, not too much, obviously, you don't want it soggy, but just enough to coat it so that they can cook. Well, so it's on the wire rack because whenever I made these before, they got just, they just got a little bit too soggy because they just kind of sit in their own, you know, like the juice that they expend, they sit in it. So leaving it on the wire rack allowed them to get a little bit crispier. They're gonna be nowhere near as crispy as if you deep fried them, 
but I like this presentation a lot. I'm just gonna go back over all of these with, um, I'm gonna put some in my hand actually. A little garlic powder. Yeah, garlic powder. Okay, so there's just a little bit more garlic powder. We don't want too garlic either. They're sweet potatoes. <laughs> Pepper. We'll do some salt. So they are going in the oven for the first 15 minutes and then we're gonna turn them. And we're cooking them at 400 degrees for 15 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> so all we did was paper towel these guys off. We didn't rinse them off, we just paper toweled them off. We don't wanna lose all that flavor. Get a little bit of olive oil because these guys are gonna be going on the grill. We don't want them to stick too bad. I'm a little bit scared. It's been a long time since I grilled some fish, so mm -hmm. we're gonna see how this turns out. Just yeah. a little bit of olive oil on these fillets because we're gonna go f meat side down first. And we were going super simple with seasoning because we really want this fish to feature for it. We really want this fish to speak for itself because pompano is a fish that has a ton of flavor. Haven't eaten in a really long time, so I just kind of want to see what it's all about. It's been a couple of years since I've uh, I probably have eaten one in a restaurant, but not eaten one that I caught myself in a good while. What are you doing? Just a little salt and pepper. So chattery. Now, I don't know if you guys can tell, one of these fish was bled and one of them was not. So go ahead and comment down below which one you think was bled and which one you think was not. Do you even know what I'm talking about? No. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna try this. We'll see how this turns out. We're gonna go skin side, or meat side down first. Threw some lemons on the grill too. These guys, um, Christina just really wanted some grilled lemons, <laughs> so the fish looked incredible on the plate. So we're doing that, getting some char marks on there. Flip this first one a little bit too early, but the fish is coming together. I'm gonna close it, give it another minute or two. Really, total cook time is probably gonna be right around seven-ish minutes, I wanna say. All right, we're gonna try and get these guys off in one piece. The skin is definitely helping me out there. That is one beautiful pompano filet. Well, that smells is, incredible. Yep. This is two beautiful pompano filets. Three. Four. Christina seasoned these guys with Italian seasoning, salt, pepper, and a little bit of olive oil. Okay, so we just flipped all the fries. Um, they're soft, they're cooked all the way through, but they're like soft, so we just seasoned the back side of them and we're gonna stick them in the oven and broil them so we get that nice crisp flavor or crisp texture, I guess. Okay, my dear, what do we got going on? Um, well, first of all, these are great. <laughs> Second of all, we're gonna start plating our food. Who's gonna have the better plate? For sure, me. What do you mean? Everyone, one foodie. everyone said in the comment section last video that my plate was better. So we'll see. There's no way. Whose plate looks better on this one? Okay, anyways. So <laughs> I'm just going to take a piece of fish. Oh, that looks good. Put it there. We're going to take. Oh, look at these zucchinis. <laughs> They're <are> amazing. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have to choose the best ones for my plate. Oh, well, you get the first round draft pick, so. I'll play with the scrubs. Still win. <laughs> old charred one. Ooh, old char action. Mm -hmm. And then I'm gonna grab some french fries. 
Oh, I love sweet potato fries. They are the best. I'm just gonna lay them on there like that, and then I'm gonna take some lemon. Oh, I swear, I was hoping you'd forget about the lemon. No. This is gonna be my secret weapon. <laughs> the lemons make everything look better. <laughs> but like, you stole all of them. <laughs> the heck? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> look pretty good. I'm so excited to eat these. Oh. Everyone knows the phone eats before the human. <laughs> you gotta admire your work. So, we have Ryan's plate. They look the same. And Christina's plate. Oh, you forgot your oh, plate. Whose looks better? You guys gotta comment down below. Now we got a taste test. Nice cup. Give me an honest out of 10 on that meal. Um, he said that I would be able to tell the difference. Like, it had a distinct taste. You the pompano, you mean? Yeah. yeah. Um, Honestly, it's flavorful, but it tastes like every white fish I've ever had personally. I don't know if it was just the way it was prepared, seasoned, or what, but um, it was good. I thought it was good. Um, give me, gotta give me an out of 10. Uh, for the meal as a whole. Oh, uh, probably like a seven out of 10. Seven? Um, we, the fries were amazing. Uh, <laughs> zucchini were amazing. I think that the fish needed a little bit more. And he said you wanted to go simple, but I think it needs more. <laughs> I'll give the pompano a six and a half and the whole meal a seven. Overall great, but I think you guys could try another recipe if you wanted to try something great. It's something a little bit different. This was a special video for me. Get back out on the pier, film a video, and have a wonderful meal with my beautiful girlfriend. If you've liked this video up to this point and you made it this far, do me a huge favor, <laughs> check out another one. It's gonna be linked right here. We'll see you guys over there. Bye. <laughs>